Step 10 is checking your work after you're done. The first thing you want to do is a visual inspection. Now they want you to take a flashlight, turn off the lights, and you don't want to just do this across the floor. It's very difficult to see anything. What you're looking for is very small specks of dust that you may have left behind. So if you place the flashlight at an angle, like I'm doing here, you can usually pick up on tiny specks because every tiny speck is going to cast a much larger shadow. If you find any, you go ahead and you re-clean. HEPAVAC, wet clean, and then move back onto this step again. If you don't find anything, you can move on to the cleaning verification. That involves taking a wet mop system like the one we have here and placing a uh, wet mopping system cloth on here. And you're going to do the area that you contained again plus two feet. And the way you do that is in an S motion. You can see that I'm overlapping. And how much you're going to do depends on how much you've contained. You want to make sure that you're doing no more than 40 square feet with one of these wet cleaning systems here. Once you've done that, you can hold it up behind the little window on our cleaning verification card that's provided by EPA. And if it's somewhere between how clean this first one is and how dirty the second one is, you've passed. If, like I'd say the case is with this one, if it's dirtier than, than this uh, second one there, you have to go ahead and go through the cleaning process again and then do another cleaning verification. If you pass on that second one, you're good to go and you can check off that this is indeed clean. If, however, you failed on the second one, this means that you've cleaned once, you've done a cleaning verification once, you've cleaned a second time and done a cleaning verification a second time, there may be something going on with the floor substrate itself. And so what EPA wants you to do is to let it dry for one hour and then go ahead and wipe it down with a dry electrostatically charged cloth. Now remember, for RRP, only the certified renovator can perform the visual and the cleaning verification. Step 11 is waste disposal. Now anything that you generate on site that's a solid waste needs to go into a heavy duty plastic bag. If it's too large for a bag, you need to go ahead and wrap it up in plastic and seal it off. Now one thing you don't want to do with these plastic bags is to take it and squeeze all the air out of it. So you're going to end up with a plume of lead-based paint dust all over the house. But a good trick you can use is to take your HEPAVAC, place the hose down inside there, and seal it off. And use that to suck out a lot of that additional air. Once you have gotten all of that, you want to go ahead and gooseneck it. So you start by twisting it like this. Once you've got it twisted, you want to take a wrap of duct tape around that. You're then going to gooseneck it. It gets its name from that bend just like you see there. A couple of twists again. and another bit of duct tape. This is now ready to take to your secure waste disposal area. That means either you take it directly to the landfill or back to your own property where you either have it in a locked dumpster or in a dumpster that's secured in some other way. Couple of notes on this. As you're walking through the client's home, you don't want any dust on the outside of this to shake all over the place. So if you happen to notice that the bag is dirty on the outside, which it certainly can be, 
take either your HEPAVAC and vacuum it off, or you can take wet wipes and wipe it off, or even go a simpler route and toss it in a secondary bag so that the outside is clean. Water generated on site needs to be poured through a filter to remove solids. And of course those can just get tossed into our bag with the other solids. And then that water can be dumped down the toilet. From a federal standpoint, whether it's a solid or a liquid, the waste generated on a lead safe work site is considered a household waste and can be disposed of accordingly. But you always want to check the local regulations first. Step 12 is record keeping. Both RRP and LSW require it. RRP, for instance, requires that any records generated before the job be kept on site during the job and then for three years after that. Now, cutting down on some of your paperwork is one of these. Having a digital camera handy to take pictures before, during, and after the job to ensure that you've done the job properly is always a good idea. That's all we have for this week's episode of WXTV. And please keep in mind that the purpose of this episode was to bring about an awareness of these two rules. We can't cover it all in the time frame that we have, so you're going to need to get yourself out to a formal classroom training on the subject. And hey, thanks for watching, and please take a look at the forums right down below our screen there and write a few comments in. Thanks. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.